You are beautiful beyond words, oh God. If you have your Bibles, give me a few moments. Turn with me to Luke chapter 4. Oh God, we love your name this morning. Wow. Beautiful God. Yes. Oh God, how wonderful you are. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. Wow. Luke chapter 4, verses 5 through 8. And I'm going to be reading from the King James Version this morning and from the Amplified as well. But the Bible reads as such. Verse 5, the Bible says, And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him, him being Jesus, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. In a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will. I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me. All shall be thine. And Jesus said unto him. Get thee behind me Satan. For it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only yeah. shall thy serve. For subject this morning, I want to speak from who will you worship? All right. All right. Who will you worship? My. Who will you worship? Wow. Who will you worship? I love this series dealing with worship because worship is so dear to my heart. I've been doing the music thing for many, many, many years. And I only, uh, back in the day, equated worship with a sound of music. But worship was always considered something, the slow section of the praise and worship set. And as I began to grow in God over the years, I began to understand that worship is much deeper than what we vocally say up here on stage. In the last few minutes of the praise and worship set. Yes. But worship has to do with this reference towards God. Mm -hmm. And this, this series is very important to me because I pray that it will be life changing for many of those that are watching. Because we need to understand that there is something that has shifted in our worship Amen. in the corporate church. Yeah. Right. Yes, the, the worship, there is something that has shifted and it is not pure worship based on the word of God and because of that hallelujah the worship that is taking place in the church is really an idolatrous type of worship and this idolatrous type of worship is causing many in the, the congregants to suffer because when you begin to move to the place of false worship my God the people suffer now you have a beautiful edifice you have a beautiful building but you have no glory or presence you have a beautiful gathering, glory to God, but, but there is no glory or power within the worshipers, those that are worshiping because they're worshiping the wrong thing. Hallelujah, glory to God. And so this is very important that we begin to understand what true worship is. And my prayer is that there will be a turning, even for those that are watching, that there will be a turning and a change and our hearts will truly return back to God and go back to the place of true and pure worship. See, whenever there is no true worship in the house, you have a lot of division. Right. There is a lot of vices. Right. And there is no unity because there is no true worship in the house because the people become self-centered instead right. of God-centered. And anytime there is selfishness and people are self-centered, every man go away according to his own way. Therefore, we cannot be unified in the spirit and be the powerful body of Christ that we must be because the worship is false. And this is not to put down anyone, but this is a 
truth coming from a servant of the Lord with a pure heart that desires the church to be what God has called and created us to be. Right. We've seen too much of this pseudo pietism for so many years, and, and pseudo means it, it, it's not genuine. Right. Pseudo. Right. It means it, it, it's a sham. Yeah. Yeah. Piety has to do with your reverence or devotion to God. Yeah. So anything that has this pseudo pietism, it means it's a sham. So watch this. It is a sham devotion. Right. Hallelujah. And if it's a sham devotion, glory to God, that means then, hallelujah, that the worship is a true. And if the worship is a true, then you don't see God moving in right. the individual lives. Right. That means we have a lot of sham worshipers. That's right. We can't love each other. We right. can't be connected in hallelujah and heart. We can't love each other deeply. Yes, sir. Then the world would not know that we are his disciples because they cannot see our love because glory to God, we're operating in pseudo right. Then we come together, we're not after God because he's God. We're after God because glory to God. Hallelujah, we heard what he can give us materialistic. Right, right. Come on. Come on. My uh, it's very important that we understand, hallelujah, what true worship is. And make sure that we examine our lives. And, and this is an individual thing that can affect us. That's corporate. Right. In this area of true worship, because there are a lot of churches that are gathering all over the country, even right now. And when they come to worship, they're not coming to worship God, but they're coming to worship the preacher. Right. Ah. And we're going to go deep this morning, if you don't mind, into some scriptures. But I really want you to understand the importance of this teaching. Glory to God. Let's look at this, this word worship. Let's look at what this, the definition of this word worship. And I believe that a great uh, uh, understanding of it would come from the Greek. And this, this Greek word is a, a very interesting word. It's called prosku. Watch this. Proskuneo. 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 Watch this. Cross means towards, come towards something. Kneel has to do with to kiss. So when you put that meaning together, you need you get this idea or this gives you the heart of worship. It means to, to kiss something out of adoration. It means to kiss something out of adoration. If you're taking notes, you can write these notes down. May this bless your heart. It means to prostrate oneself in homage. Homage has to do with this, this honor, this honoring of God. So worship has to do with the honoring of God. Proscunio. To kiss. To come towards. To kiss with this, this deep affection. Or this deep intimacy. This adoration. Because of that, you prostrate yourself. Because, glory to God, you understand the beauty and the majesty of the one that you are worshiping. Ah, Amen. hallelujah. That is, that, that, is the, that is the heart position that we must take when it comes to God. Amen. When, 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 when you were coming up, and some of you may not remember this, but when we were younger, we would have young ladies that we would think we had fallen in love with when we were kids. And it changed from year to year depending on who was the cutest young lady in the class. And if, if you got so caught up in that young lady, I should say young girl back then. Hallelujah. I used to hear people say, you worship the ground she walks on. Now, when you say that you worship the ground that she walks on, I often wondered what was I doing that would make somebody say, you worship the ground she walked on. Right, right, right. But I found out that what made that the statement come alive, it was because of the actions that I was doing towards the person. Right. First of all, I made them the center of my attraction. Right, right, right. Come on, Pastor. And when I made that person the center of my attraction, now I did everything to please that one that right. I worshipped. Right. Hallelujah. Right. That meant I, when I went to get clothes, I would find out what she liked. And so when I went to the mall, I would get the things that I knew that would get her attention. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I found out what little cologne that, that she liked,
lights, glory to God. Back then, Avon was the, the, was the thing, and we would get come on in the little glass automobile. It had a little top on the back, so you might remember that one. But, 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 Lord, they had a little top on, a little, and you could unscrew the back of the car, and you would dash them on you because you wanted to smell good because, glory to God, you felt like you wanted your fragrance to be attracted well, to you. But also you would find out everything you could about her and what she liked because, glory to God, your whole life was centered around her. Right, right, right. Uh, if she said, glory to God, she liked a young man that made straight A's, if you were on the D on the road, you could get the shift to the A on the road. <laughs> so she could even make you better, glory. If she said she liked a football player and you were in gymnastics, you would get out of gymnastics and go take a hit for this girl about to kill yourself all because you worship the ground she walked on. Come on, come on. Come on And so it is with God. When you worship Him, you move to the place where everything in life is centered around Him. It's about His pleasure. It's about Him being glorified. Hallelujah. And you study Him the more to know Him the more so that you can please Him the more. Glory to God. And everything that you do, even when people rack your last nerve and you really want to say something, you will think about what pleases Him and you will conform to His will and deny your flesh for Him. That's what worship is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo! So worship is deeper than your song. Worship is this place of reverence, hallelujah, that affects your lifestyle. And it can only come out of the posture or the place of love within you. Come on here. Right, right. Now you see why some people fake worship. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Because everyone doesn't love God like right. that. Right. Uh, yes. Y'all not with me here. Come on, and so when you look at this word worship, it is this intimate place of reverence. It's this, it's this place where God becomes the center of your attention. And out of this position or posture of worship, everything in your life is affected. I treat my wife right because I'm a worshiper. I bless my children because I'm a worshiper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I obey the Lord and it doesn't feel like a burden because I'm a worshiper. Hallelujah. I can forgive you for what you've done because I'm a worshiper. So really God as the center begins to control and influence every part of my being. Worship. Worship goes deeper as well because worship means God is the center so that means that no man takes his place. So what that means is even though I may admire and respect my pastor when he is in error according to scripture and he's off from God, that means I won't side with his lie. I will side with God. I won't promote him because I love his personality. Hallelujah. And put down God's word from his word. My pastor's words cannot replace God's word. also what we see in the church. We will see many people who are worshiping man so much that he can lead them in error and they don't even care because they admire their bishop over God. But my question is, where will your bishop be when you have to stand before God and give him account? Talk today. Talk. Talk. But I found out in studying scripture that you really couldn't worship anything. Right? Right. Right. But I know through scripture that were Baal worshippers. Yeah, yeah. You can worship false deities. You can worship demons. Right, 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 right. Uh, you can worship things. Yeah. Hallelujah. You can worship people. Right. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Or you can worship God. Yeah. Yes, sir. My, my, my. Who you worship identifies who your God is. Who you worship identifies who your God is. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Come on, uh. So we can say all day long, I worship God, I worship God, I worship God, I worship God. But uh, if the things you are doing do, does not line up with the pleasure of the, the recipient of the worship, then that means it cannot necessarily be the one that you claim that you're worshiping. 
me. There must be an action that lines up with what pleases the recipient of the worship to confirm who you are worshiping. Yes, That's too much to repeat. I'll say it one more time, but I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase it. So if you're saying I'm worshiping God, but watch this, but you are giving up all of the service of the devil, then which God are you worshiping? Beyonce feels like she's worshiping God. Y'all didn't want to get in that church for a minute. Dr. Michael Hardy and all this mess. This demon possessed stuff. Sitting on this pale horse. Come on, Do you not understand the wickedness that's going on? But what scares me is the fact that you have so many church people Because they love her personality and her voice. They love her image. They try to be like her. They have, they have themselves exalted her to a place of God in their lives. And these are people that go to church every Sunday. Something is wrong with that. I'm a church girl. I'm a drop it like a body. Young people, you got to be careful of the music you listen to. Hallelujah. Just because it's artistic. So you cannot get to the point that you're so caught up in the, the arts. Hallelujah. That you cannot deserve the spirit behind the arts. Talk to somebody today. Okay. Help somebody today. Okay. Okay. Help them. Help them. Music doesn't do anything for me. Yes, it does. Music has influence. Yes, it does. Because I have written songs and uh, songs and, and and watch people start to weep and cry as they listen to the lyrics of the song. Music does have influence. You can be down to put on a hardcore rap song and feel like you hyped up. Why is that? It is because the influence of the music is causing you to have a certain attitude and mindset. The music plays on the emotion, the feelings. But the lyrics affects the soul and the mind. In something that's causing my emotion to be open. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There are things in that can enter into my mind and it become established within me and start to control conduct. My kids will come up, I will go in, hallelujah, and I will catch them when they were off guard and snatch their phones and start checking stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And a few times there were some whippings that came out of there. Right. Right. Because I understood, glory to God, I've already instructed you and told you, hallelujah, and you're still listening to stuff that's going to hinder your soul. Right. And my kids can tell you that the stuff they listen to affect their spirit. Right. Yes, it is. That's right. That's right. Come on. My God. It should have been there. Who, my. who will you worship? See, in worship, I actually serve the Lord. Right. My God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In worship, there is a service unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And then it's also in this worship that leads to this amazing conformity to the, desi to the desires of the one that I'm worshiping. I want you to catch this. When we look at worship, whenever I'm in a place of worship, it brings me to this conformity, not to my me. But worship brings me to a place, true worship right. brings me to a place of conformity yes, to the desires of the one that I am worshiping. Yes. Uh, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. This is very important because I have noticed a change in worship. And if you ever want to understand who you are worshiping, ask yourself, who is being glorified by what you do? That's it. That's it. That's it. What is being glorified? If you want to identify your worship, ask yourself the question, hallelujah, who or what is being glorified by your service and what you do? Is God being glorified? See, that is the best question to ask yourself ever. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's if it. you want to identify That's who it. you are worshiping, That's ask it. yourself, is what I'm doing, is this really bringing glory? Right. That's it. That's right. Uh, That's it. Good question. Huh. Wow. I've 
I've seen something and you don't mind, I want to walk through scripture real quickly and then I'll get you out of here, I promise you. Hallelujah. In, in noticing this worship change, I've noticed something quite unique. Follow me, church. That if you change the God, then you can change the worship. If you can change the God, go with me. You can then change the worship. So the worship changes. Hallelujah. If the God changes. That's it. That's it. And there are many people now that are standing up who are saying this is God and this is God and that is God. Even though it's not God of the Bible, but they are saying that this is God and this is God's way. And this is what God is saying. And the church says, okay then, we will begin to do that and practice that. Because you did say this is God's way and this is God. Not realizing that they're worshiping the God of man. I'll get into that in a moment. So this, this is a very common thing that most people don't see. And if you notice the worship, glory to God, is, isn't as intense or as, as, as committed as it used to be back in the day. It's because all of a sudden, we go from this holy God to this any kind of way God. Right. Yes, sir. If you stop and you listen to what is now being taught by the leaders, now you have this anything goes God. I don't know where he came from. <laughs> For real, if you go back and listen to teaching back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, uh, I, I listen to David Wilkerson, I love that David Wilkerson got, and David Wilkerson got and A.W. Tozer. Uh, I listen to men like that. But, but, but if you go back, hallelujah, they were preaching the God of the Bible, but they were not preaching the God of the Bible. Right. 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 And this little new version of God, he seems to be kind of, kind of, kind of liberal. This little new God they have out now, he seems to be, you can do just whatever and live any kind of way. And it's okay because the blood is covered. You can just intentionally go out and take somebody, intentionally go out and live like you want and it's all right. You're right. You're like, where does God come from? And people will actually take scripture and find something yeah. to try to twist it. Yeah. And sometimes when they're twisting it, it doesn't make sense. But what they're doing is trying to twist it to create a, a God that your flesh will like and be a pleased with and appeased by. Right. So they change this God by changing what he requires. Right. That's it. They change the God by changing his value system. Jesus. And what happens is you get another God. Yeah. Yeah. And they set him up and say, this is the God now in the church, and this is how you worship him. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you understand it or not, Baal worshippers had a totally different practice and lifestyle than the worshippers of the children of Israel. Right, right, right. Hallelujah. Right. They began to sacrifice, and they, they did things, burning their children in fire, and sacrificing, killing their own babies unto their deities. They had all types of things that they did. Yeah. In their practice or worship uh -huh, uh -huh. to appease their God. Right. So isn't it amazing now My that we have this new God? Watch this. Oh God, I feel this. I gotta go there, y'all. Y'all gotta bear with me. Oh, but it, it's amazing this this new God that we have now. It's kind of like now this new God. Watch this. But the, 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 the old God, God, the original God, you could not be a preacher. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and, and get up here and throw away your wife because she was no longer your pleasure. Hallelujah. Now you could throw her away, but they won't throw you out the pool. That's because they will not let you operate. That's right. But not for some reason, this, this, this new God that they have now, you can throw her away and get, get an upgrade. So about 20 years younger, Lord and God, and about 50 pounds smaller. And now we can put her up there, and the church will applaud you. You come and say, y'all need y'all's new first name. What? Who was the other one that was here last week? But the crazy thing is, it's okay. And then people will say, well, that's called the mercy of God. No, that's called the foolishness of flesh. But when you change your God, now that becomes accepted. And then the church is so crazy because the church applauds it and they still have followers and people still right. come to the church and it's okay. It's all right. This is the danger of changing 
your God. Why? Because when you change your God, uh, with that you change the requirements. That's it. And that thing can become a sin yes. to you oh, no. and a snare to your life when you change your God. God, the main God, the only God. <laughs> oh. I know he can get under your skin sometimes. Come on, Pastor. Come on. He doesn't always agree with your right. Mind. Right. But after all, he's God. Yeah. 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 Until you name a star, and until you hang it in the sky, yeah. and until you know when the storm is soaring, and you know when the lightning flashes from, and you can see tornadoes, and put it back up in the air, yeah. and you can come to the road that's on the ocean, and stop by the ocean. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 12. Mm. Go down to verse 25. To give you a backdrop or background to this particular story. Solomon had shifted from God. His son Rehoboam was next in line to take over the kingdom. But they also began to move to this place of idolatry worship. Worship in Ashtoreth. Milcom. Worshiping all of these false deities. And because of their worship, hallelujah, God came and actually shifted the 12 kingdoms and gave them, 10 of them, to Jeroboam. The prophet Ahijah actually saw Jeroboam coming along the way and he took and cut 10 pieces of his new garment. And he cut it off and he said, God is giving you 10 tribes. Watch this. Notice, God is giving you, you'll find that over in chapter 11, God is giving you 10 tribes. So keep in mind that God had given this man, Jeroboam, 10 tribes. So it's a God thing, right? right. Now watch what happens over in verse 25. The Bible says this, Then Jeroboam built Shisham in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein. Hallelujah. And went out from thence and built Peniel. And Jeroboam, watch this, said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go, watch this, up to sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto the Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me. And again, watch this, and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods. O Israel, my God, was brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And he set the one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. What is he saying here? Jeroboam, you will find out in chapter 11, God had already given him ten tribes. But now because of his insecurity. And because of his fear, right. Right. he did not want the people to go to the prescribed place and worship, which was in Jerusalem. Right. See, every year they had there were three main feasts that they had to attend, and that was the feast of the booths, the feast of weeks, and the unleavened bread. And they had to travel to Jerusalem to begin to participate in this worship moment. Hallelujah! But he had an issue with them going back to Jerusalem because he had a fear that oh you're going to see the majesty of the city of David oh my God are you going to see how many you're holding the name Jehovah is going to be kind and nice to you all and y'all are going to want to stay back with him and not come back here so in order for me to stop this worship what I'm going to do because I personally have some insecurity issues even though I heard God already tell me he gave me ten tribes but because I have an issue and a fear that I'm going to lose y'all and make it convenient for y'all to worship there. Here is your golden calf. Y'all worship here. Here is your golden calf. Y'all worship there. Just as long as I feel secure, I'm going to change your gods to change your worship. Hallelujah. To handle my insecurities. That's why you got to be careful when you deal with men who are willing to change the word of God because of their own personal pleasures. And right now, you find the lot of leaders who are very insecure and they are moving in the realm of their flesh instead of faith. If this man was a man of faith, he would have said, no, we are all going to the prescribed place of worship. And that is Jerusalem. We are not going to change God's laws or ways 
just because of my flesh. That's it. He changed their worship. That's it. By changing their gods. He said, here are these golden calves. This is your God. This is who brought you out of Egypt. Now, 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 that part right there messed me up, but I, I, I gotta go deeper. I wasn't even so concerned about Jeroboam. I was more concerned about how in the world are you people really believing that this is the God that brought you out of Egypt? I wasn't concerned about Jeroboam. I was more concerned that there was a people that actually believed this foolishness. That's it, Pastor. You mean you can let a man, he can get so much in your head that he can come change your God? Hallelujah. And change the requirements of God and you follow it? Notice the Bible says, and this thing became a sin. Yeah, that's right. So that means their worship was sin. Yes, that's right. Their worship was an abomination. Their worship was offensive to God. Ah, God. Wow, come on. My Lord. Help today. They were not worshiping the true God. Right. They allowed Jeroboam to change it because of his personal fear. And he gave him another God. Right. 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 And if they change the word of God, if they change your God, you better be open and realize and recognize that it is power and run and free from that place. Because at this point, it's about your soul. Yes. It's not about the size of the building. Uh -huh. It's not about the exhibit that you serve uh -huh. in. It's not about your position in that church. Right. Because if you are serving in a church that's false, then that can make you false and that can get your soul to an eternal hell. You must be careful who you sit up. Some of you don't understand. You don't even know it. I even rebuke myself. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I am not above the word of God. Right. When I can feel something is getting off, I put myself in check yeah. with the word. Glory to God. We all have to give an account. Yeah. That's it. Glory to God. That's it. Come on, Pastor. This worship that they were operating under was a false worship, and it became unto them a sin. My God. That's why worship is also about God's worth to you. Yes, it is. Right. When God has worth and God has value, hallelujah, you find yourself in the place of obedience and honor. Mm. Obviously, God did not have that much worth to them. Right, right. Watch this. It's easy when you can preach another gospel mm. that requires you nothing mm. but to live in the realm of of your pleasure right. flesh. That's it. That's it. That's easy. But the question is, if it's causing me not to truly worship the true lady God, yes. then what will it cost me? Ah, my, 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 my. What is it costing me even right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Who you worship can actually be determined simply by what and who yeah. you Question, who or what are you trusting in yeah. your religion? That's it. I can trace your worship back to what and who you are trusting. That's it. Come on, Pastor. Uh, Matthew 6, I don't have time to go through it. Matthew 6, 24, it says this. It says, no man can serve two masters. Come on, today. Teach. He will either love one, glory to God, and hate the other. Cling to the one, glory to God, hallelujah, or leave the other. He says, look here, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the God of materialism and possessions, glory to God, and things. And so if you are serving money and serving things and serving and living in and trusting in, let me tell you now, they will make a bad God. I gotta add this. We live in a world now where people have gone money crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll do anything for a dollar. Anything. A My God, will sell your kids for a dollar. And y'all gonna be real, glory to God. I've watched people, even if people, if you know people that have a whole lot of money, it's almost like the, the church looks at them differently oh, yeah. because they have money. Oh, yeah. Oh, do you see who's coming in here oh, now? Yeah. They have a whole oh, lot of money. Sir. Oh, yeah. And their character and spirit can be jacked up. Worldly material possessions. 
Oh my God, did you see their house? Is no, See, when you grow up and become a worshiper of God, you learn to look past all of that stuff. My God, you learn to value God so much that the things of this world, hallelujah, they, they lose their luster. That's right. That doesn't mean, Lord God, that you can't have a house and have people. That's not what they mean. But it's just the fact, glory to God, hallelujah, that your worship is unto God. I see how they just seem to put so much value on people yeah. because of what they do or right. what's this or their celebrity. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. right. Oh my God, do you know who she is? I must take a picture of her with me to make me feel like I'm somebody that won't really know me. Don't know you. But this worship of man, this worship of people because of what they try, what they right. read. How much money they have. Oh my God. Come on, say, ask God to burn that out of you. Yes. Ask God to purify you. So the point so that you can see, I don't care if an NBA player walked in here right now. That means nothing. Is he saved? Does he need Jesus? How can I love on him? Hallelujah. It's not about what he's accumulated on the earth that matters. It's about the condition of his soul. But we need to mesmerize my people and their celebrity. Come on here, Pastor. Well, they are gone. Worship. Worship. And if you understood the beauty of worship, it would radically change oh, yes, and revolutionize your life. Oh, yes, indeed. See, oh, yes, indeed. hallelujah. See, whenever you are truly a worshiper, the benefits that you get from worship is this is that God becomes the reward That's for right. worship. That's right. You don't understand. That's when right. you are a worshiper, you have the presence of God. And there is nothing greater than the presence of God. See, God becomes your reward when you are a worshiper. See, when you are a worshiper of the world, you need the reward that comes from materialism. But when you are a worshiper of God, just His presence, hallelujah, when He comes in and gives you the peace you need, then that's the reward of your worship. Hallelujah. When He comes in and comforts your soul, that's the reward of your worship. When He shows you salvation, that's the reward of your worship. When He gives you peace in your soul because you are connected that is the reward of your worship when he fills your spirit with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, that is the reward of your worship. Do you not understand by your Christ? God himself is the reward of your worship. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. You can see what I'm asking, but if you're about to commit suicide because you have peace of mind, hallelujah, and what difference and what good is the house if you don't have God peace in your house. God, I thank you that you met me in this room. While I worship you, you feel my soul with your presence. I feel you're touching me. Yes. That is the reward. God says, I will reward you with myself. Yes. Yes. When you are a worshiper. Greater, nothing greater, nothing greater. Hallelujah. In closing of this teaching, my, 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 my. Satan tempts Jesus up to this high mountain in Luke 4 and he shows him the splendor and the majesty the preeminence the authority of all the kingdoms of the world and he says all of this I will give you if you would bow down and worship I have a feeling that some of you would have taken that day if you would have took it. Lie. That's Lie. what scares me. Yeah. What was he saying? I will give you all of these kingdoms. Let me show you the power and the graces and the authorities that you can have. Because Satan says, because this has been given unto me, I reign over all of this. I will give this unto you. You will have authority. Over these kingdoms. He must have not understand who he was talking He did not know that, y'all. He did not know that. How are you going to speak to somebody who walked in the wrong spirit? Right. Right. Come on, Pastor. But okay, Satan, if you want to waste your breath, okay, go ahead and talk. Come on, Pastor. I will give you the authority. I will give you the preeminence. Let me show it to you first. 
See, that's what you got to watch when, when, when God, hallelujah, is, is in your life. But the enemy is coming to try to sway you, to shift you in your worship. You got to watch what the enemy shows you. Right. Come on. That's good. You got to watch what he presents to you. That's it. So he shows it to you. Because anytime the enemy shows you something, it is to stimulate desire and a lost force. That's it. That's why you got to be careful when you allow the enemy to show you that you start to whet your appetite on the because that is the thing that can ensnare you. So he tries to stimulate this desire for us. Let me show you, Jesus, what you can have. Let me show you the beauty and the power and how you will reign and rule over all of these kingdoms of the world. I'll give it to you, but I will only give it to you under one condition. Right. You must pay me homage. Yeah. 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 You yeah. must honor me. Right. The Amplified says at least one time. Right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You must honor me. Worship me at least one time. Oh my God. Come on, man. Talk so before me. My Hallelujah. God. Well, you must understand well, what would that have meant if Jesus would have done that? Because if I worship something, then that means I declare that it's God. Right. So if I'm worshiping you, then that means that I declare that you are God, oh my God. That you reign and that you rule. And at the end of the day, that's what Satan wants. He wants the prestige of God. He wants the authority of God. He wants to be like God. He will never be God. He will always be lowercase God of this age. But here he wants, oh my God, check this. He wants God, oh my God, to declare him God. Jesus, the Son of God, he wants him to declare him God in one moment so that he can be appeased and have his authority. But then that means that God would have to put himself down and know only God, which is a lie, if I worship you, who's false? Oh, uh, y'all listen, y'all listen. So now I see what you want. You want the worship because you want me to declare you as God. And then, hallelujah, you will give me all of these kingdoms. But here is the thing. Jesus is not materialistic. Right. Uh, right. Jesus isn't moved by the temptations of this world. You must understand. Hallelujah. But here is the other thing that you must understand. For those, hallelujah, who turn your worship from God to the enemy and this world. And that is this. The enemy always allows you, hallelujah, to come into something sweet at first. Right. Right. But he never tells you the price that you must pay right. for the worship that you give you. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Come on. He doesn't let you see what it's going to do to your soul when you worship him. He will never tell you the end result because Satan is already destined for an eternal damnation for the rest of his life. So he has nothing to lose by taking But he's a liar, and therefore, glory to God, there is destruction with the promises that he gives you. Jesus! Oh my, oh my. So you must be careful of who you worship. Yes, yes, yes. The things that the enemy says, the things that the enemy promises, the things that you see in the world, they look good, but they will put you in a jail cell. They will put you in a graveyard. They will put you in a hospital. They will damn your soul to an eternal hell. And so therefore, you better be careful kissing the hand of the Lord. You better be careful adoring Satan. And the things you see. Because anytime you worship something, you kiss it. You adore it. And so if you're starting to worship Satan and doing the things that he does, you will kiss his hands. You will bring the adoration to the devil. But you don't understand the kiss that you kiss will become the kiss of death instead of the kiss of life. My God. My God. My God. Help us today. You can worship Jesus and it is a kiss of eternal life. Yes. That's right. The adoring of Jesus, the worship of Jesus brings you life yes. and peace. Yes. The worship of Jesus brings you wholeness, soundness, and joy. Yeah. yeah. But when you kiss the hand of Satan in our uh -huh. And you kneel before him. Uh -huh. And you serve him in worship. With your body. With your flesh. 
And you are indulging in every illegal thing under the sun. Yes, it's good. Your mama can't tell you nothing. Your daddy can't tell you nothing. No one can tell you. And you're kissing the hand of Satan. In the end, it will cost you eternal life. He never tells you about the destruction. Right. That's right. That's right. That's only what looks good. Come on, Pastor. In closing in the presence of God, Jesus himself is the truth. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Satan is a lie. Yes, he is. But the question this morning is, who will you worship? Come on. That's it. That's, right. That's the question. Who will you kiss in adoration? My. My. Who will you prostrate your life before? Either God or the enemy. Worship saints of God in closing this morning. Worship is to to simply to live your life in honor and respect of the God who gave you life. So then why take the life that God has given you and use it for the enemy? Right, right. It is the will of God that we as a body be wise and be true worshipers. In doing this, we will begin to experience the greatest moves of God that we've ever seen in our lives. If you want to experience wholeness, be a worshiper. Right, right. Can right. I say something? And, and this hit me, this is so elementary, but yet it's so true. It was a simple act of worship. God says, don't do this, but do this. Amen. And you look and you hear it, you think about it, and you say, I hear what you're saying, God, I'm do this. In that one moment, yes, yes, sir. Yes, you just show God yes, he has no value. Yes, right. yes, he needs nothing. Yes, right. Right. You don't care nothing about what he says. Right. 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 But yet, the next week you will come and say, I need you. Right. 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 But you need to tell me you couldn't obey right. the smallest oh, simple instruction. But God, you don't understand. See, you don't understand how I feel. You don't understand. This is my this is personal to me. I don't care about that. in that moment, you just reveal that you are really a worshiper of your flesh. Right, that's it. That's it. It's called self-worship. Yes, that's right. And the moment you realize self-worship, you cut off your power source until you come to a place of repentance. That's it. And more than anything in the church I see that's killing the power of God in our lives. And that is this thing called self-worship. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You're right. That's it. But my prayer is that you take the truth yes, of the scriptures. God. Study these words and worship the God who has given you life, who has shed his blood on the cross, who has died that you may have this yes, eternal indeed. life. Worship him every day of your life yes, and experience all of the things that he has died that you walk in and walk out. May God bless you. God Amen. thank you. This is my prayer. Yes. Stand on your feet in the presence of God. We are praying. We are praying. We are praying. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet. We are praying. Yes. Who will you worship? Yes. Who will you worship? Yes. Truly, body of Christ, who will you worship? That's good. That's good. That's good. Who will you give value to? Eve made a horrible decision. Come on. She claimed, hallelujah, just by creation to be a worshiper of God. As a matter of fact, she was created to worship God. Right. She and Adam, they were created to worship. But she gave ear to a serpent that was under the influence of Satan. My God. And he was able to talk her out of the very thing, hallelujah, that God told her not to do. Right. In that moment, she shifted in her worship. Mm -hmm. And it cost her, but not only her, it also cost her husband. Yeah. Right. And to be honest, it also cost us today. Yes, One moment of irreverence yes, costs generations and generations and generations of sin. We go to funerals right now because of that. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. It's amazing that we don't think about these things. 
When we think of worship, we just think about the loud sound we're going to make when we get to church. How about you shifting your mind and recognizing that worship is a lifestyle. It's about what you do when you leave this building and when you get off this stage. It is about the reverence that you carry. The reverence that you carry unto God even when you leave this place. The honor that you give Him by yielding to His way and His word when you leave this place. It is a heart that says, I love you. Out of that love, it becomes a power source and motivation behind everything that I do for God. Who will you worship? I was in the room and I went to a moment of tears as I was looking at Mark chapter 5. And I noticed that even a demoniac who was crazy out of his mind living in the tombs, even this demoniac in his wretched condition, when he came to Jesus, yes. on Mark chapter 5, yes. he said that he worshipped. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A demoniac. And it's so crazy. Wow. 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 When I looked at it, I was trying to decide, was it the man? Or was it the demon, the spirit in the man? And when I read the text closely, I noticed in Mark chapter 5, it wasn't just the man. It was the unclean spirit in the man that had to bow down and give reverence to God. Even demons have to bow down. That's just how powerful he is. And that's why he said, have you come to torment us before time? unclean spirit was speaking. Oh, glory. Mama. Saints of God, who you worship will revolutionize your life. Who you worship will change your course. Who you worship will bring fulfillment and satisfaction where it can bring misery and grief. It is the worship of God. God has created us for his glory yes, he to worship him alone Jesus. and no one else. Yes. I love when God, when Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. Yeah. You messing with the wrong that's situation. It. That's, it. that's it, that's it, that's it. Satan, that's get it. behind yes. me. Yes. It is written yes. to worship the Lord thy God only. Yes. I love it because Jesus was letting him know. Yeah. Worship belongs to God alone. Yeah, that's it. And no one else will get the worship. Nobody. I'm praying in this room, this atmosphere, that in this room, the true worshipers will arise. Yes. True worshipers of God will arise in this place. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you reign and you rule on your throne. God, I thank you so much that you have blessed us to glean from the scriptures and the word today. God, I thank you so much that you love us enough to send us the truth. There is no one like you. There is no one that compares to you. Father, I pray today, right now, that you do a mighty thing in the lives of your believers that are in this room and even for those that are watching today that you will begin to move upon their hearts and that you will begin to strengthen them in the area of their worship. Cause them to be true worshipers. Cause them to value you, God. Cause them to honor you. And then I pray that you would cause them to be a light in a dark world. Cause them to shine so that others may see the light. And that light is your light. It is the light of your presence, the light of your truth, the light of your goodness upon them and cause them to shine so bright that others may be drawn to the light and be saved, God. Heavenly Father, I pray right now whatever is handicapped your people, they got to strengthen every feeble place. Yes, Lord. They got to fix every wretched place in them that they may be your true worshipers even in private. Yeah, yeah, in their private lives that they may be true worshipers. I pray today, Father God, that you cast outside of their hearts and their lives anything that is illegal, anything that is binding, anything that stands as a hindrance, God. 
I pray that you would remove it by the power of your spirit, that true worship was may arise, God, and that we would not be ashamed, God, but give us a boldness to represent you in these last days, God, these evil days. Allow us to be bold for you, God, as we stand in the truth as true worshipers. I thank you, God, that you killed that spirit that would cause so many people to be, to be shams in your church, but I thank you for true worshipers. And those true worshipers, God, that they may be ambassadors for Christ. That we may represent your holy name with such truth that even the sinners will say, what must I do to be saved? And I thank you for your spirit in your life. May we never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, we receive. And we make this announcement in your presence. We will worship you only. We will worship you only. As a matter of fact, we commit ourselves to worshiping you only for the rest of our lives. Our worship will only go to you. We thank you and we seal this committed moment in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, somebody that loves the Lord, give a praise in the house. May God bless you and God keep you. It's my prayer. Hallelujah. Come on, Jose. Can you move that hat? Hallelujah.